<clears throat> Welcome everyone to the um, first uh, moot in February. As is customary, I will ask uh, in the words of the first verse from God of Spall for a little silence, then we should proceed to light the candle and start the moot. Jos tige galla helge kindir, neer jog minni, neer de zin galla. Elk kwelt, elk kwelt sinne, vel nat, dat meer. De hoge maag, om dit is elke sinne, ga geven het zitje om den zeker. Heile aas, ik ga de aas sinne, en het zijn ogen, om het te volgen. Mal of man wird gewählt auch da. Mal und zwei mal leicht und zentner mehr und mehr. Brandt auf Brandy brennt und brennt in Air. Und die Quick ist auf von der Mutter auf Mann nicht, wer es auf Mali gehört, ein Ziel da ist gehabt. Dogs of our peoples and lands, may we spend this time together in friendship with you and with each other, and use it to the common good, with profit and with pleasure. Welcome, uh, uh, Pavel. And yeah, as I said, I'm just going to introduce the, the subject. Um, according to the Pew Research Institute, in 2050, the number of Muslims is projected to have grown to be equal to the number of Christians, making a combined 60% of the world's population. China, in a couple of decades, will have more Christ churchgoers than North America does at present, and in the future as well. Both these two religions seem capable of entering uh, into any culture and growing, and they are outstandingly successful in being able to take over other systems of belief and practice through the strength and uh, simplicity of the message. There have been many um, wonderful pagan or Dharmic religions that have flourished throughout the world and in its history. The British Museum is full of their artifacts. Um, but now at least where um, Indo-European languages are native, Hinduism and its offshoots is the only major one left standing. Are pagan or polytheistic religions inherently less robust than the monotheistic Abrahamic ones? When people practice certain traditions, observe certain rituals, um, but to do so without being able to give a coherent account of why, uh, it can make a system based on them structurally weak perhaps and followers susceptible to a closely argued attempt at conversion by a consistent theology. And uh, it's my understanding that uh, some part of why Roman paganism uh, faded uh, was due to this. In Europe, um, non-Abrahamic traditions that explicitly connect with the sacred, with the gods, have largely faded away. Um, therefore, those that do have an indigenous vision of the divine cannot just continue um, to practice that which has already ceased to be done. New acts have to be enacted and maybe some legitimating theology has to be articulated before these acts develop uh, a life of their own and evolve. But before one starts to articulate such a, a legitimation, I think it may be wise to try to grasp the, the natural history or morphology of the phenomenon that is pagan religion and I'm sure that uh, what Pavel uh, will be speaking of here will be most helpful in that endeavor. Please, sir, you, 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 you have, have the floor. We are all ears. Um, you're on, on mute, yeah, that's it. That's it. Thanks for having me. Yeah. And thanks for the introduction. Uh, can you hear me well? Right. Um, <clears throat> I've made a small mind map 
Um, so let me let me share a screen with you or my screen with you. And uh, some of Alan, I think, uh, said that he will he would have to leave in forty minutes. Basically, uh, that's what was my original idea to to have this lecture about 30, 40 minutes. So I will just try to sketch the main outlines uh, <clears throat> and uh, and then, and then, uh, and then, uh, this I, I just one. made you co-host, so yeah. you could be able to share. My board advance. So. Oh, sorry. Wait a second. I will. I have to. I have to allow allow the 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 screen the the, the sharing of the screen. But um, well, any anyway. I I want I want to try. I want uh, I want. It's not somehow. It somehow doesn't work. Any anyway. So. Um, the introductory part, what's uh, where instead mentioned uh, the rise of uh, Abrahamic religions uh, in contrast to <clears throat> so-called pagan religions is um, a striking thing. And uh, I guess that my my lecture will uh, mm, my lecture will uh, reveal what might be behind. So uh, basically what I would like to talk about today is um, the connection or if there is any between modern paganism and Christianity. And basically my question is or the, the thing I would like to talk about today is whether Christianity might influence modern paganism in any in any in any way um, my argument is based on a, on a comparison between the so-called ancient or pre-christian pagan religions uh, based on the example of ancient rome and i compare this uh, ancient roman traditions with uh, early christianity or christianity so why why these two well as christianity emerged in the roman empire uh this so the encounter of early christians with greek or roman or egyptian uh so-called paganism would be then the best the best example as uh, it was the first encounter what christianity could could uh, could experience so that's why uh, I I chose uh, to show you the example of of the ancient Rome. Uh, of course, then uh, there will be a possibility of talking about uh, a different so-called pagan cultures like India, Japan, uh, perhaps China, or uh, other non or pre-Christian uh, cultures like uh, Nordic traditions. But I, I won't I won't go I won't go there at the moment. Uh, first, I'll be talking about ancient Rome and describe what, describe the ways how ancient Romans understand their own traditions. Then I will I, I, I will then I will show how Christians understood these Roman traditions. And then, in the in the next part, I will uh, I will try to skip and make a bridge to the twenty first century, and and identify some of the features what uh, Christianity attributed to the pre Christian Roman traditions. So. Uh, in ancient Rome, there were many different traditions. 
uh, not only the state cult, but you could have seen different mystery schools, uh, rituals and traditions coming from the East, uh, from Greece, from Egypt, you know, uh, there were many gods, many philosophical schools, but the point is that no one knew in the ancient Rome which one of all these would be the best one. So uh, they were, they better kept all of them, or almost all of them, of course, uh, of course, in case they, they uh, were in accord with the, with the state cult. But at the same time, all of these, all of these uh, different mystery schools, philosophical schools, or all of these traditions were as one, as, as uh, the last famous pagan, uh, I think not attorney, but basically a pagan in a, in a state service. His name was Simachus or Simacus. So he said that all of, and it was not only his opinion, he said that all of those traditions were human instruments. They were, in other words, they were not somehow divinely revealed as we know this story or this mechanism from Christianity. All of these uh, different uh, traditions or mystery schools were human instruments, how to tackle or understand or grasp or at least somehow encounter with uh, what we call the divine, or as he put it, what might be the, the greatest mystery behind all of this. Basically, That's the one I'm going uh, to do sorry. Oh, uh, I'm not uh, sure what that was. It was uh, uh, perhaps uh, I'll put everyone on mute except you, Pavel, in case there's any any noises. Yeah, um, please good. go on. Um, so, the common designation for these Roman traditions were was was. Oh, uh, Pavel, can you unmute yourself? Sorry, I'm just going to put. That's it. So the common designation or a designation for these Roman traditions was religio. And so this, this religio was a, a name or a designation for a tradition which was inherited from your ancestors. It was practice-driven uh, uh, it was it was a it was a pure practice in the Roman terms, and that one condition and the other and the other is that it was inherited from your forefathers, where beliefs were not important part of this religio. Uh, if you read, for instance, Cicero and his De Natura, De Natura Deorum on the nature of God. There you can find wonderful passages how important is that religio, the tradition is inherited from your forefathers and you are not basically allowed to question it. The argument of Antiquity is just okay for itself, for a tradition to exist. Mm. Then another common designation was uh, in Rome was superstitio. So you can you might hear religio, religion, and superstitio, and then English superstition, but these were not the same as we understand these terms nowadays. Uh, so coming back to superstitio, superstitio would be an excessive extreme version of religio. Um, so if, if religio was a practice of, uh, let's say, washing hands, 
superstitia would be an excessive practice of washing hands like like these days in in corona <laughs> that people would wash hands just for sure instead of three times a day hundred times a day so mm. that would be a su superstitious <laughs> superstitious person to put it in english but superstitio meant also a kind of wicked or wicked practice uh, if you if you if you read Herodotus uh, or Plutarchos, they describe Jews and their practices or their tradition as totally wicked and uh, and disgusting for Romans. So they they would they would attribute uh, a designation superstitio to the Jews in in the first place. Um, also, superstitio was a designation for a foreign cults which were not which which were not known before uh, so some mystery schools before they 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 came to rome were considered as as uh, superstitious but the thing is that uh, coming back to religio uh, the super Super, both superstitio and religio was based on uh, on the practice itself. So, uh, to give you an example, let's say that my religio from the what I would inherit it from my father and my grandfather and my great grandfather and great great and so on. So, from my ancestors would be that I do go into the swimming pool every morning so that would be a tradition of my family that would be a religio and now i can have many different opinions or beliefs connected with this uh, with this practice or i can have none yet i still do the practice itself so that would be so this practice is independent on uh on uh, holding any dif any beliefs or mm. opinions, what what matters is that you do the practice. That's it. So that's that's the way I would I would explain a nature of Roman religio. It is a practice inherited from your forefathers, which is not dependent on beliefs. Or you can you can have different beliefs. Uh, again, uh, give you example. Uh, Cicero, he was for some part of his life he was a head of uh, of this uh, group of augurs or augurs, these diviners. Uh, he was basically he was uh, meant to he was meant to. Uh, uh, now, can you can you see my can you see my picture now, by the way? I'm, I'm afraid not. Um, no. you, you're trying to screen share. You should be able to do it because you're a co-host, but uh, we can't see anything. Hmm. Um, anyway, sorry, I've, I've never tried that. So uh, I never tried that before. Uh, um, <laughs> Pavel, click on the share screen button, the green uh, one on the bottom. Yeah, uh, that's what I did, but, but it says, uh, it doing says it that I need to allow it in the system uh, settings and uh, and uh, I can't I can't because I, I I made such a nice map you know but I can't find it at the I can't find it at the moment well anyway I, I'm 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 giving up and I will I will I will focus on the presentation um so I was talking about religio superstitio ancient Rome and uh I was trying to explain that the nature of religio in ancient in ancient Rome was practice itself, which which uh, which matter, and uh, yeah, and uh, I was trying to give you an example of it. Cicero, who was head of the augur augurs, the diviners, and um, uh, when you read his book, *De uh, Natura Deorum*, he even doubts about the existence. He about, he even doubts. The, about the existence of the gods, he should serve. This is 
this might be quite strange that the he now it 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 would mean for us that he he would attribute no sense to what mm -hmm. he does but that's not the point this is our contemporary understanding now i'm making a a a jump this is our contemporary understanding which is based on christianity or or on a christian mm -hmm. understanding of, of of the matter because uh, we now take we are now uh talking about beliefs meaning uh beliefs and meaning but coming back to cicero so he was he was uh, doubting about the existence yeah. of the gods but then you have a different roman or greek intellectuals who were for instance mocking the gods or laughing at them or laughing at the very traditions and, and considered them as considered them crazy or nonsense or some even said that all these rituals and traditions are only for the control of the of the mass of the of the mass of people and and um, they in our common in our current terms they would they wouldn't they wouldn't attribute a sense to these to these practices but that's not the thing the thing is that how is possible how is possible they they could they could have done that in, in in they could have thought about it in this way well the thing is that there were two debates or two discussions in uh, in in, anti in antiquity one what what is the nature of the gods second how to worship the gods so first what is the nature of the gods? The natura deorum on the nature of the gods. The, the other one, how to worship them. The thing is that these two, the subject and uh, an approach to the subject, these two were not connected together. Those were two separate discussions which were held separately on each other. Only until Christianity, which connected these two together. But now I'm jumping, and I, I will I will come to that point later. Um, so I now what I did now is that I've uh, I've tried to explain the nature of Roman religio, and or you you might you might you might you might say the nature of Roman paganism. Just, repeat, just repeating it in one sentence, the nature was a practice, a pure practice, repetitive practice inherited from your family, from your community, from your ancestors, basically. Different people, different practices, different traditions. The thing is antiquity of the tradition, meaning it's inherited and the second, it's a practice. But there might there there could have been beliefs mm. there could not have been beliefs uh, beliefs as such did not matter mm. Mm. that much. Mm. But then, uh, but, but could mm. I uh, uh, practice as far as I understood it was uh, would have included the recitation precisely of certain words of the ceremony uh, without which the ceremony would be invalid. So. Yeah, it, it wasn't necessarily just physical acts. It was, it was words. It, it, yeah. Might be words as well. Yeah. See, mm. uh, they can they have an example of uh, of Indian mantras. Yeah. What matters is the right way of pronouncing mm. the, yeah. the 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 utterance, and of course the the context. But the thing is, yeah. Mm, utterance of a mantra or or a different a different uh, spell or charm or chant or whatever is also a, a practice or a matter of practice now very briefly what christians did well when christianity emerged in in the roman empire uh, 
I want to go to details. It took some time until until Christianity found, let's say, found its shape and um, and how and how it um, approached its uh, its offshot or which they were which they called as heresies. But the thing is that. It seems quite certain that from the very beginning of Christianity, because they were inspired from Jews, um, they created their enemies, their ideological enemies, their their religious adversaries, so to say, uh, the so-called pagans. The rest, uh, paganism, uh, just for a matter of repetition in Christianity ever since the, the early church fathers, basically till nowadays, because it, it's still, it is still based on the very strong foundation, I mean, the Christian theology, which was written in the early centuries, not all, but, but basically all, but most of the early church fathers, they came up with the founding stones of Christian theology. Mm -hmm. So within this Christian theology, paganism is a designation for a false religion, a false religion, whereas Christianity is, of course, the, the vera religio, the, the, the true religion. Now, recollect, recollect the example I told you that Simachus, the, the, the last pagan, um, last pagan uh, senator or was uh, the last pagan attorney of Rome. Uh, he considered he considered all Roman or Egyptian or Greek traditions as human as human instruments or human inventions. Whereas Christianity, since its very beginning, claimed that that religion, which is called Christianity, but religion is a divine gift to humankind. It is not a human instrument. What, which is, what is also uh, important at, 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 this, at this moment is that uh, in the process of uh, self-legitimization of Christianity, Christians came up with an idea that, that uh, because they, that beliefs are important, they couldn't they couldn't prove antiquity of their tradition because they just uh, came up they just emerged out of nowhere basically they they didn't have any history as jews did or egyptians or romans or greek did have christians didn't have any historicity or any traditions they could prove to romans mm -hmm. to to legitimize themselves so they basically claim that uh, not that they are traditions as Romans or Egyptians, so not not their traditions are old, but their beliefs mm -hmm. and their doctrines are old. And they even say, one of one one church father says that their doctrines are even older than the invention of letters. Mm -hmm. uh, and the doctrines, of course, are not a human invention. I mean, the Christian doctrines, but they are the God the God's gift to humankind, not only to Jews, but to humankind, this is also important, meaning that it can spread all over the world. Uh, so, for Christians, beliefs became important, and beliefs, uh, they are a foundation for a practice, meaning uh, there is no practice without beliefs behind or, or beyond. So adherence to doctrines is basically more important than the practice. Mm, mm, mm. Or doctrines are first, and then yeah. practice is the second the second thing, mm. which is which which comes out of. So mm. now I'm coming. Now I'm coming to the like first conclu first uh, summary. Religio, religio in Roman way was practice, 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 practice. 
religion Christians said they they do have this religio, which uh, but but they changed the meaning. Religio for Christianity was vera religio, Christianity, the true religion based on the true belief, and false religions, false religion, paganism, which was based on false beliefs, false beliefs, false practices. So Christians they they establish a kind of uh, unseen link. Uh, perhaps, uh, perhaps with an exception of Jews, but an unseen link in antiquity between the link between practices and beliefs. This is the crucial, the key part. This is something what the so-called Roman pagans didn't have. They didn't have such a strong connection. Mm -hmm. Not, not a strong connection. There was no. I would say there, or it seems to me, while, while when I read the, the, the scholarship on ancient Rome, or on any, now we can we can jump and speculate on any other pagan uh, cultures. There was not, there was no strong, there was no connection between beliefs and practices. So. For Christians, purity of belief is really crucial. Um, so beliefs are also something what makes, uh, or, or to put it otherwise, uh, beliefs are important feature of, of religion. Beliefs, and then second thing, the bond or the link between beliefs and practice. Then you then there are then there are other features uh, important for religion. Um, but I I would now stick with these uh, with with just with the beliefs and uh, and doctrines. When we talk about doctrines, uh, doctrines are any codified sets sets of beliefs which are considered as essential for a for a particular group to become to become a religion so uh, that would be for christianity a belief in one single god creator of this world and so on and so on so so for religion beliefs are important for religio, for paganism, I mean now, and I mean now, I mean really the pre-Christian or non-Christian traditions. Belie I would say beliefs are not that important. This might be a partial answer, or this might be the first step towards an answer to set comments in the introductory part of this lecture. Why, oh, there was, there was this uh, sentence that uh, Abrahamic religions, Muslims and Christians are ruling, basically are about, or it seems to be, that they are about to, let's say, rule the world. And why, why uh, Christianity also won the battle with the so-called Roman paganism in the, in the second, third, and fourth centuries uh, CE. Well, uh, apart from the power issues and uh, which emperor was for or against Christianity, um, apart from these issues, perhaps this uh, emphasis on beliefs an emphasis on doctrines and on this uh, theoretical part of religion is uh, and and the building of systematic theology which is connected with the practice so the connection between the nature of the god or the nature of the god and how to worship the god this is something what what i think um contributed heavily to the, to the victory of Christianity mm. over the so-called paganism, mm. but that's not. This is not a full answer. This is a, just 
a part mm. of, of an answer. Mm. Well, okay, let me now skip to the to the next part uh, of uh, or or the second part of of of, of my of, of this short lecture. Uh, see, I know that uh, it it would be a big jump from uh, ancient Rome to 21st century Europe or United States or world worldwide today. Um, but uh, I was I was. Um, I was I, I spent some time thinking about how how Christianity or whether Christianity could influence uh, contemporary paganism in 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 uh, in certain way uh, and I and I and now I try to focus on on uh, on these two things one was the the link or the bond between beliefs and practice and the other one and the other thing is or our beliefs uh, as, 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 as such. When I was, uh, when I, or ever since I've, I've been doing research on paganism uh, across Europe, all people I talk to, all pagans I talk to, or almost all of them, I guess, like 95%, there were exceptions, but uh, but hardly any. All, almost all pagans I encountered said that, that beliefs are important and Beliefs are or can be a foundation for their practice. So, well, this is no surprise as uh, we are no longer living in a pagan culture where you would inherit a, a strong uh, family based mm. customs like, I don't know, um, swimming in the river every summer solstice for instance mm. Mm. well we do inherit different things we do inherit different uh, christian den de denominations or i i have inherited atheism for instance from my from my family background but but not not that i would adopt it but but um the thing is that our culture is basically very different than the mm. culture of uh, ancient Romans. Mm. So, um, beliefs are important for Christianity. Uh, um, in Christianity, purity of belief is, is crucial. The thing is, uh, they they are important, big and and as they are important, they. And because of their nature, they um, they allow you to distinguish between true and false, the 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 the, the black and white, the the true religion Christianity and the false religion paganism. Uh, so this is this black and white logic. I to put it simply, we would we could consider it as a Christian instrument so let me give you an example uh, some time ago i have read an article on patios patios that come uh, bearing the name uh, one you can you can't jesus you can't worship jesus christ and be pagan um or another example uh, some some Asatru, for instance, some Asatru followers consider some Wiccans, for instance, as not pagan enough. Mm, mm. Well, some of them do not, but but I'm just trying to portray a few examples, mm. which, according to me, resemble this black and white, true and false uh, beliefs, important logic. Um, or, or uh, so, we, so, so yeah. Let's uh, let us stick with these examples. So these examples talk about who is and who is not a pagan. Are are Wiccans pagan enough? Are they pagans at all, or are they rather uh, occult, esoteric uh, 
uh, followers uh, and uh, or or is is we call rather ceremonial magic than than paganism. So this it allows you to ask these questions. Uh, this allows you if you if you if you if you stick or focus on uh, the belief, the the way people believe and the content of the of the belief, or. Um, To give you an, a different example, when uh, contemporary pagans are either forced or by themselves focused on uh, these beliefs and doctrines, when uh, imagine a situation when a pagan community would like to register at the Ministry of Culture, for instance, by, by the state, that they are official religion as Buddhists are and Christians are and Muslims are and, 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 and so on. So for instance, in Czech Republic, they would have to uh, uh, write bylaws and in these bylaws, they would have to explain their religion. But the, the problem is that the, the problem is the law as it is written is suited only for the Christian churches. And as a important part mm -hmm. in in one in one paragraph, you have to explain your doctrines. Imagine you have no doctrines because <laughs> because because uh, I don't know you 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 mm -hmm. have you are having a Roman religion which is based on pure practice mm -hmm. which is inherited from your forefathers or your ancestors. Mm -hmm. And what are you supposed to do then? Well, you would have to invent it somehow. Mm -hmm. So we do believe in many gods, not one god, but many gods. Uh, we celebrate that we celebrate them in in such and such a way. We do have priests. So, and and so on. And the story continues. So what 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 this what this mechanism uh, does is that it forces contemporary pagans to adopt mm. themselves to the Christian patterns mm. and. By doing so, they they are forced to distort, distort, let's say, uh, a nature of their of their religion or practice. Uh, may I just uh, insert a, 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 another illustration of that, if I may? Um, um, in in China. Uh, um, indigenous folk religion is is a is a, a major uh, part of the religious landscape of the people um and there are very uh, but however it's very difficult to get good factual information about it because um as you say they don't have any specific beliefs it, it, it's quite a uh, uh a diverse mixture of practices and things taken from towers and so forth and there is no single name they can use to fill on, on, on a form and also the chinese government don't recognize it but that there are, you know, possibly more people who practice uh, folk traditions in China than there are uh, of any other uh, of, of something like Christianity or whatever. But it's, you know, it just just falls outside of the framework which is designed for these these kind of uh, uh, mainly Abrahamic faiths. Sorry, sorry to interrupt you. Um, yeah, well, that would be another. Slightly another story, but it definitely do fit in in what I have said so far. Um, so, yeah, I've uh, yeah I've 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 uh, tried to provide a few examples of how contemporary paganism might might and now that's the issue might let's say unconsciously adopt some mechanisms from Christianity. Um, well, see, that's putting it or, or considering it from another perspective. If we let us consider that contemporary paganism emerged in 1920s, 1930s. Well, 
it is or it was a Christian culture and uh, with a huge gap between between 20th century, just take an example of, of the Czech Republic. Uh, Christian, Christianization happened around uh, 9th to 10th centuries. So there is a gap of 1000 years. I do not want to talk about certain remnants or survivals of uh, folk customs inspired or somehow, uh, yeah, folk customs inspired by former pre-Christian traditions. I do not doubt there are some, because they are some, but the thing is uh, the overall setting of, of our culture is Christian. So. So uh, researching how, so the, the answer for that Christianity might influence uh, modern paganism, well, yes, it does, or it, 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 it might, or it may. The thing is that well, I think we should, we should uh, understand how exactly and in which way um i argue that any focus on beliefs and doctrines are such an example of a christian influence on contemporary paganism because let us say uh, let, let me go back to the example of uh, of samasa to uh accuse with some weekends that they are not pagan enough, let's to put put it simply. So so they are they are dealing with the question who is and who is not a pagan. How can one decide who is not who is and who is not a pagan? Well uh either based on what you do or what you believe. Um, well, time is running. Let me let me let me let me chart. Let me let me let me chart a, a short conclusion, and then we can we can uh, we can shift to a discussion. Um, I have said that beliefs and doctrines present a Christian mean of delineation between religions. I further argue that the emphasis on beliefs and doctrines might or can occur or emerge or exist in, in contemporary paganism. And I, so far, I have identified two conditions or two, yeah, two conditions. Um, beliefs and doctrines in contemporary paganism emerge in relation, always in relation to someone. So either to a different religion mm -hmm. or to a different, to your fellow pagan, let's say to fellow pagans. Mm -hmm. So when Asatu debate with Wiccans, not always, but often, beliefs are employed in, in the, they are they are used in the discussion as a matter of uh, delineation or, or differentiation or or claim who is and who is not pagan mm -hmm. or when when uh, modern pagans have to have to delineate against different religions Christians for instance and say we are not satanists our beliefs are different, our practice is different, or when they have to delineate or define themselves uh, against the state or the state authorities, they, they, would, they would write down bylaws mm. or principles of Wiccan beliefs, what we, what we know from American Wiccan history. So um, beliefs and doctrines might emerge in, 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 in specific context, context in order to help contemporary pagans 
either to define their positions against different religion or state authorities, or they might serve as a mean how to argue between themselves or ourselves, who is who is pagan, who is not a pagan, who is pagan enough, who is not pagan enough, and all these uh, crap. So, so these things, so these, so beliefs and doctrines. Uh, let me conclude. Beliefs and doctrines in contemporary paganism are present. I would argue, not as uh, not as most of the pagan studies scholars argue that uh, that they are not. Uh, beliefs and especially doctrines are important in situations of pressure or conflict. Then, uh, then uh, we still need to somehow think over whether what is modern paganism? Is it a religio in the Roman sense, or is it religio no religion in the Christian sense? And then understanding this discussion, religio versus religion, uh, beliefs and enforced beliefs, meaning doctrines, is are are important are important feature in 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 this in this in this uh, debate. Mm. Well, that's uh, that's all from my side. It's been. It's been a very long time since I've uh, since I was delivering a lecture. So uh, sorry for all the gaps and and no, uh, uh, all the silence. Please silences. don't uh, please don't and, apologize. It was it was very very good. I um uh, AJ, I, I I thought you you had your hand up first. So uh, uh, unmute please, uh, AJ, so we can 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 hear you. I did have my hand up, but Michael was before me, so I... Oh, was it? Oh, well, that's very honest of you. Uh, uh, go ahead then, Mike, Michael. Uh, and, uh, yeah, unmute, please, Steve. Yeah. Uh, uh, thanks, Adrian. Uh, and uh, well, I, I enjoyed the talk. And you, you raise an awful lot of issues in that. Mm -hmm. And to be able to say what you're saying, you're going to have to do, a, I mean, a really huge survey of contemporary pagan because i mean again i'm thinking of margot adler one of her basic points in her drawing down the moon was that paganism is not about belief it's about practice and granted there are i mean all right in uh, in the united states selena fox and that whole effort to get paganism accepted as a religion and you know capital paganism, paganism with a capital P, um, they are arguing in terms of religion because that's, they want to be able to compete and survive and get governmental benefits and, and so forth. So there is that move as well, but whether paganism is basically religio or religion, it's it's really complex and so all right let's just take your heathen nordic uh instance uh they may first of all the the other major thing that's always said is there is nobody that can determine who is pagan and who is not there there is no overall authority and usually it's left up to the individual to either affirm or, or disconfirm um there are many atheist pagans who, who don't who do mm -hmm. not believe in the divine or gods or all that mm -hmm. but they, they identify as pagan they act as pagans they follow rituals and participate in them and so forth so when you talk about the uh the heathen thing i'm wondering the focus on at least with focus, which is different than maybe more universalistic uh, heathenism, but focused heathens uh, focus on the locality. But is that really a belief or is that not a value? They value the immediate, they value the, lo mm -hmm. the locality, they value the uh, racial ancestry. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, it becomes really a question of 
distinguishing belief from valuing. And value seems to me to go more into what you do again. You, you do what you find mm. out. Um, so it's, I mean, it, it's a fascinating uh, duality that, you, that you've spelled out. And, but it's really a complicated one. And I'm not sure how you ultimately really established, especially with the prevailing belief in this case, that paganism is less about belief per se, that's an individual decision. And it's basically what we do, that we come together, we have our rituals together. Uh, sometimes we practice individually, but uh, again, it always seems to come down more to what we're doing rather than what we're affirming as a specific belief. So I'll leave it at that. <laughs> Just uh, two sentences. Um, thanks for the value versus belief. Mm, mm, That's mm. very interesting and mm, crucial. Mm. Yeah, very complicated. I would have to think about it more. Uh, second sentence. Um, I've tried to write down some of uh, my uh, research, uh, fieldwork research. I, 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 I was conducting uh, across the Europe um, within the last couple of years. And uh, the article is currently in the peer review in the, I hope in the last round, in a Nova Religio journal. I, I, I'm hap I'll, I hope it will be published and I'll be happy to share it with you afterwards. Once I hope it, mm -hmm. I hope it will get published. Well, we will see. Uh, and uh, well, let us perhaps let us let us let yeah. us uh, move to a different to other other question. Yeah, it was it was a, a big issue, Mike. I, I think AJ uh, and then um, Mikhail and then uh, Ma I think Michael from Cologne. Yeah, yeah, AJ, please go ahead. Okay, um, I just want to start by saying that you know I've done a lot of research in this topic too, and most of my research concurs with your major conclusions. I agree with you about the difference between uh, belief and practice and what the Romans meant by religio is not what these people are saying. So I agree with that, but I have a subtle point. And you just said it as I think in passing, so I don't wanna to make too big deal out of this subtle point that I wanna make. You contrasted 10th century paganism with 20th century reconstructions of the paganism that were infused with Christian thought because the reconstructions were made in the context of a Christian culture. I completely agree with that. However, I wanna go back a little bit and talk about the 10th century, okay? I think by then there had already been influence, okay? Um, many people, including one of our speakers, it might've been Michael, if not, it was one of our speakers, made the point earlier that um, already by that time, there was a reaction to Christian aggression, notably Charlemagne's, uh, the Frankish invasion uh, of Saxony and the forced conversions and near genocide that occurred, created to some extent the Viking movement, right? Uh, as an angry and violent reaction to Christian aggression. And that by then certain things surged that were, you know, in reaction to Christianity and uh, as such, influenced by them because as you know you come to resemble your enemy in many ways when fighting mm -hmm. them mm -hmm. and some people say that the entire cult of odin not that the god but the 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 yeah. cult of odin as a supreme ruler of the Aesir, uh emerged at that time kind of like what anthropologists called secondary state formation even though it wasn't state formation it was a religious reaction so that already i think by the 10th century there's two centuries of Christian influence, not friendly Christian influence, but <laughs> yeah, you know, unfriendly Christian influence and reaction to Christianity, which essentially made them a little more Christian like. What would you say to that assertion? Because it's not just me, other people have made this assertion. It's thanks thanks for the comment. That that that's that's very interesting. Mm -hmm. Um it seems while you were talking about 
uh, the 10th century and the reaction to Christianity and all that, uh, a, a, first, a first idea came to my mind was that actually what I would say back then we might be tempted to consider the encounter of the so-called pagans and Christians as a clash of two different religions, but I would consider it as a clash of two different cultures. Then it would make sense that um, the so-called pagans would would charge against the charge against the Christianity because they might they could have felt or considered it as endangerment for their own culture and way of life and all that. And that would make perfect sense. Well, this is not an answer on mm. on your question or comment. This is just mm. another comment. But no, it is. I'm, I'm sorry that. I just wanted to point out that it went further back mm. Mm. than just the 20th century. These guys have been interacting for some time. Mm. Yeah. Uh, no, I think that's a really good comment, uh, AJ. And I mean, we are in possession of poems um, that were specifically written at this time in opposition to the, the wave of Christian culture, such as um, Thor's Tropa, that Halcon Yarl commissioned from his poet, that is, is a poem about Lord Thor, that is, um, placing him as a figure uh, in opposition to, you know, the, the, the uh, um, globalizing deity that, that was kind of sweeping across the across Europe. But anyway, now I thanks for that. Um, uh, I think Mikhail, you're you're next, please. Go yeah, ahead. Uh, I will try to be brief, but there are so, like so many things that came to my mind during this. <laughs> so, um, first thing is that uh, regarding the as uh, Pavel said about the plus uh, the black and white logic. As he said, it's, it originally stems from the scholastic interpretation of Aristotle, especially of Aristotle's categories, right? And that's very interesting because even Heidegger himself says that, and also it is connected with the idea of belief because I feel like during this whole discussion, we are connecting belief with thinking or the mind or the reason or reasoning. Right? And even Heidegger himself said that the dominance of reason as an equalizing of everyone is but the consequence of Christianity and as the latter is fundamentally of Jewish origin. So, and this dominance of reason is really of, of the Jewish origin, I agree with that. Wow. But in contrast to this plus, and to, to this logic of, of plus and minus of this, of the black and white, there's a very interesting philosophy that comes from Japan, and and, and what I found that in Japan, this uh, the the original uh, pagan religion Shintoism works very well and still connected with the practice. And Kitaro Nishida defined a specific logic. It's called a logic of either logic of basho or logic of the place of nothingness. And this logic is not exclusive, but inclusive. So it's a very different way of, a uh, very different type of logic than we're used to, of course. And uh, this is connected with Mike, what Michael said about locality, because it's, it's the logic of the place. So it's connected with place. Um, but also another, another important point connected with the belief and practice is the fact that uh, there is an, I'm reading it at the moment. It's a book from uh, Yasuo Yuasa, and it's called The Problem of the Body Mind. And it's the fact that because we have the tradition of this rationality of this reason, sort of we have disconnected the body from the mind, right? Because practice is connected with the body, where we see that belief is connected with the mind, right? So, but the way, it's very interesting how the Japanese look at it. So it's sort of mm, mm. like we used to think of like we have the body with the mind and the body, right? And they're somehow connected. But the Japanese sort of look at it as an intersection, right? So when you just take the pure mind from the body, you, you left something of the mind in the body and vice versa. So 
this is a very different type of looking at, uh, and with, with this looking at the, if we look at the body mind as one whole in some sense, we can grasp practice and belief more interconnectedly, right? So we can say that the practice is the belief, right? And that's yeah. even what a lot of existential philosophers say, that what you believe is not what you say you believe or what you think you believe, it is what you do, mm -hmm. part by what you do. Like if you look at, I don't know, for example, a very well-known uh, psychologist, right? Jordan Peterson himself says that, right? And he goes from existential philosophers like Kierkegaard and, and, and Nietzsche and, and he does he didn't study Heidegger, but these two especially. So I would say it in this way, um, regarding uh, religio, I would also say that we do have one tradition, which is still religio as a practice. And I would say that's philosophy, right? It's a pagan, it's originally a pagan tradition, mm. right? <laughs> philosophy itself. I mean, original philosophy, and this would be especially pre-Socratic philosophy because, because Aristotle and Plato were strongly, in a strange way, interpreted by scholasticism and used for Christian purposes, Aristotle and Plato both. So, so we have to look at the pre-Socratics -pre if we want to find, uh, in some sense, the root of that. But I would also believe that that's also connected with, uh, well, some part of, of this uh, uh, original philosophy was preserved during the medieval ages, I believe, in, in Hermetism. That's what I'm studying at the moment also. But Pavel Horak probably started it also. So, because there are also elements in, the, in for example, in alchemy, in alchemy where, where, where there's a strong connection with other with, for example, the Taoist tradition, which also has an alchemy. So that's also, I would believe, a pagan tradition that's all evolved. And even, even, even Heraclitus talks about how the elements change into one another. And also, if we look at Aristotle's metaphysics with the, with, mm. uh, with the understanding of the elements and astrology mm. and things like that, that's all of pagan origin. And even Heidegger tried to, in being in time, to find mm. sort of this origin of this of this metaphysics that is that is of pagan origin. Mm. Um, uh, thank, thanks very much, um, yeah. Pavel. Do you, do you have a a, 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 um, a broad a range of points? Uh, obviously, are, are you speaking to me? Uh, no, so, so, um, um, uh, Pavel. Sorry, Pavel. Uh, uh, thanks, uh, thanks, th thanks for the comment, Michal. Um, just. Again, a few a few brief uh, comments. Uh, well, see, I I would claim that the emphasis on reason started with the Greeks, but and uh, and then uh, we can also say an em the, an emphasis on reason, as as we might understand it these days, uh, was already in uh, the ancient India when you have this logic school of logic nya, nya, nya. Mm -hmm. but that's that's not imp that's not such important um uh what i would what i would like to stress i might be wrong but i think i am not uh <laughs> is that uh this true and false logic or black and white logic it it starts with the patristics, not with the scholastics. Scholastics is that like that's already Middle Ages, but patristics, no, I mean I mean Aristotle. 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 Ah, yes. but okay. I <laughs> uh, uh, see. I wanted I wanted to emphasize and put an emphasis on. Uh, I would say it's clear that, that you couldn't you couldn't you couldn't consider a tradition as false. Uh, or a practice as false in the ancient Roman perspective. A practice, a movement cannot be false or true. It can, only, it, it can be only conducted in the less or more proper way. Mm -hmm. That's not, but it has nothing to yeah. do with truth or truth mm -hmm. or falsity. So, um, yeah. Um, this bl oh, this oh, black and white comes with oh, Christianity, according to you. What? We're live. Oh. Um, <laughs> <laughs> uh, pa 
Pavel, if, if I may, would you say that this, this way of uh, identifying a practice as being performed in, in a, a more correct or, or, or less correct way, is that uh, that's similar to the distinction between dharmic and adharmic? Hmm? Uh, I, don't, I don't see the connection. Um, dharma is, is what one has, uh, what one is supposed to do, and atama is what one is supposed not to do. So mm -hmm. there is some sense. Yeah, I, of... I now I understand. But... Dharma. Yeah. I yet yet I can uh, yet I I wouldn't con I wouldn't connect it. I wouldn't connect these two. Okay, okay. I, I I think it's just a pet thought of mine that that dharma is 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 a a, a concept which does which is found in all the Indo-European pagan traditions. But sorry, I um this is for other people to ask questions, not me. My Michael uh, from Cologne. I think you were next, please. Okay. Yes. Thanks. I don't know if there are questions because indeed, as you said, it brings up so much. Yeah. I just wanted to pick on one thing. And this idea, which I find very interesting, that practice is belief. I thought there's one word that nobody's mentioned yet, and that's fanaticism. And fanaticism, I would define as insisting that belief and practice are completely unified. And uh, there, a, a slight disagreement I might have with what you said about um, Christianity, Pavel. If we look at the history of the Christian church, the mm. Protestant the Reformation, and particularly in England, the establishment of the Church of England, stressed the importance of practice at the, uh, at the expense of belief. And if you look at the speech of Queen of England against the Spanish Armada, she rallied the people on the basis that the Spanish would bring in the Inquisition. And the Inquisition is the system of religion that does not accept that practice is sufficient but that you must be a true believer in your heart and the worst methods will be used to establish that you are a true believer and if you're not, you will be burned. And that I would almost define as fanaticism and that might answer the question, why did the pagan, pagans so easily in a way succumb to Christianity and mm -hmm. many interpretations of it? But it might be the rather depressing thought that one says very easily a fanatical Christian you know, says very easily a fanatical Muslim, but when you say fanatical pagan, you sort of think, huh? <laughs> I don't know any yeah. fanatical pagans, you know. I mean, instead has never threatened me that, that I'm going to sort of burn in some sort of equivalent of Valhalla hell if I don't, <laughs> you know. But I, I have met uh, people of his age who have definitely told me that I will probably burn for various reasons. So I just sort of throw that in, and I think fanaticism mm. is a very important element which paganism, mm. to you know, does not have, which is wonderful in one way, but in another way is a kind of a weakness, perhaps. Yeah, 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 yeah. That's, 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 uh, so sorry, Pavel, go ahead. I, let's shut my second. I think it's it seems to me that this fanaticism goes hand in hand with with. Uh, too much emphasis on the right beliefs. That's what uh, let not mm. only the practice, as, as you as you mentioned, that I totally understand the way you 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 you, you described, but, but for Protestants, the 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 way how and in what you believe. That was also a matter of of, of utmost importance, and and uh, they really wanted to delineate against the Catholics, and they considered even the Catholics as pagan and from from different reasons. But uh, why we don't why we do not see fanatic pagans? Well, because uh, the pagans are not so much obsessed with with uh, enforced beliefs in, uh, in, 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 a, in a doctrinal way, but it doesn't mean there are none. It, it means that you, you, would, you would find an example of, 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 of people like that. I, I, I have myself uh, met, such, met such people, but 
in my own pagan perspective, they are no longer pagan. They they actually <laughs> turned into Christians. Oh, there you are. There yeah. you are. <laughs> I must just a slight thing about what you said about Protestantism there. Yes, you're quite right from the 16th century and so on. But perhaps I should stress a bit more the Church of England. I, I, I think the Church of England was, I have to say was, because I think it is dying. But the uh, Church of England was very much this belief that it was a question of practice and the identity was a national one. So maybe the, the, the fanaticism that was necessary to keep the Church of England going for centuries was not in the religion, but in the nationalism. That in the fact the church was the ritual of the of the national state. Mm, mm, yeah. Mm. yeah, no, that's a very good. Um, uh, if uh, and I think for purposes of this discussion, it's quite sensible to regard Hinduism as a variety of paganism, uh, and one looks to India, which is the only member of the pagan family that uh, has resisted the globalizing you know, uh, uh, forces of, uh, of Islam and Christianity to any extent. There you will find people who, I don't know whether one could call them fanatics, but they, they take their religion seriously in a way that is in another dimension to anything we, we know here, i.e. people keeping their hands up literally for nine years as a, as a devotional practice. And- it, uh, Nine years? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I mean, the, yeah. Some of the things which which uh, in Indian sadhus do is, yeah, it, it is uh, from another world, really. Uh, however, they, they they are not persecuting people for not believing, and it, it it's, yeah, it it, it, it is a different uh, uh, way in which which they they're, they're doing it. I mean, Hinduism has never really done that to 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 any group. So in that sense, it's quite remarkable. Do you have any comments about? You know, if you like, the, the, the Hindu kind of piety in, 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 in extremes of. I will, uh, let me start from and uh, from the other end. Uh, I was studying, I was, I was studying PhD with a colleague of mine and she's from India. And uh, the focus of her PhD thesis was on Indian Christianity. She's uh, from Kerala, from South. She's yeah. from the Christian Indian Christian family, and, and Christianity is based in in Kerala. I don't know for last five hundred years or so, mm. and uh, she conducted hundreds, I think six hundred interviews all over Kerala and Karnataka, and uh, and uh, she was really trying hard to understand the nature of Indian Christianity. Her conclusion is that. Indian Christianity is actually not a Christianity in the European Western religious sense. Yes. What Indians did, they turned Christianity over time into another, just another, mm. well, I, I mean out of many, just into another Indian Hindu Cult. tradition. Yeah. 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 <laughs> they, yeah. You know, they didn't, According to the Christians, they didn't understand the basic, the basic uh, tenets, the basic yes. beliefs. You know, you can't, you know, put Jesus Christ next to next to Ganesh, for instance, God. <laughs> so, so, um, so yeah, uh, they they resisted because uh, somehow they their mm. culture. Let let us mm. suppose it's it's, it's the, the cultural setting. Uh, enabled them to do so and now and and the question is why and i i think that's a big research question because mm -hmm. uh, uh in uh, japan and in uh, and in uh china all over the centuries i uh, see i i'm not an expert on, on uh, chinese christianity nowadays so i don't know how chinese mm -hmm. christianity do does look like or what what is what is its nature, I mean, in the 20th century or 21st century, but but what I have learned from the colleague of mine and other colleagues of mine from India, um, at least out of Asian traditions, at least Indians or Hindu, uh, according to me, really does resemble how the world might have looked like, I don't know, 2000 years ago, mm. be, it, be it Egypt, Rome, or North or Central Europe, 
plenty of gods and deities, mm-hmm. various different traditions. Many, many, all of, the, almost all of them are local. Different mm-hmm. versions of of hundreds of different Minervas, hundreds of different Peruns or or mm-hmm. Odins or I don't know. Not not a single unified mm-hmm. universal Odin mm-hmm. or or Ganesh or I don't know whatever. So. Uh, if I could just pick up uh, that um, uh, th- this thread and, and link it to M- Michael from London's earlier distinction between uh, values and beliefs. Um, mm-hmm. I, I, I've been attending a, a Hinduism class for which is aimed at young Hindu children, you know, perhaps you know the age of 10 or something. And there were separate lessons on Hindu values and Hindu beliefs. So that was something that they seemed to quite Dis, uh, regard as quite distinct and the, the, the teacher said that he, he in India um, uh, Muslims if they're able to live quite peaceably with, with Hindus who are doing what their religion actually tells them is, is totally against you know the, the, the commandments of Allah to actually worship images then actually they're observing Hindu values of that you know if they're getting on well uh, within that, well, to some extent, their religion really should mean that they would uh, destroy their their, their neighbours' kind of uh, murties. So, I mean, uh, and he, he did, you know, uh, Michael, yeah, get, yeah, jump in. Well, I mean, of course, if you look back, back at the history of the, the Mughal invasions, I mean, they were destroying the Hindu yes, murties. Yes. But yeah. the Hindu themselves, I mean, there's so much into worship per se, and it's a practice. Uh, they'll worship anything. I mean, you, they'll puja. They'll go to the uh, mm-hmm. Taj Mahal and they'll leave offerings at the Muslim graves. They'll they they will go into a Christian church and they'll do puja uh, in in the church as well. They, I mean, they'll worship anything that they see that is spiritual or religious. They're open to uh, express mm-hmm. doing their puja, which is a which is a practice thing. It's not. Yeah. The belief, if there is a belief, it's a belief in just doing the practice, being yeah, yeah. Uh, worshipful. Mm-hmm. So, uh, yeah, they they are a complex. <laughs> <laughs> I would, I would, I would just add, I would just add that uh, I wouldn't put an equation between Hindu and Indian uh, in a way that. Uh, uh, there is, let's say, Indian culture consisting of Christians, Muslims, and Hindus, and Sikhs, and I don't know who else, indigenous uh, in the north, and Jains, and indigenous in the north. And uh, con- recollecting the example of a friend of mine uh, uh, researching Indian Christianity, it could be Indian. Uh, Indian, uh, Indian uh, Islam. Uh, the emphasis on the practice uh, turns uh, or changed uh, the nature of Islam in India into a Indian tradition, very close to Roman religio way. This, of course, doesn't mean that there are no attempts uh, paid by Saudis and all, and all that to to radicalize these Indian Muslims in India and uh, uh, but this, this is a, a different story mm-hmm. um, is it yeah uh, that those who have aren't asked any questions perhaps uh, uh, I'd, um, Edith do, do you have any sort of comments or thoughts that have come uh, across your mind that you'd like to share or things to ask Pavel <laughs> Can you, yeah, um, I just because I'm a complete beginner, I was just um, wondering what pagan actually means. I wondered what it is in Czech, for instance. Is it pagan, the word pagan? What do you say in Czech? Pohan. Sorry? Uh, pohan. Oh, pohan. Pohan. And does that have a meaning? I mean, does it? The, does, same, does, the same. The same. So, what, so, well, sorry, begin, complete beginner. What does pagan actually mean then? What, what does it mean? Pre-Christian. I think it comes from the, the country, surely. 
from pay French mm. paysages from the land. Yeah, like, 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 uh -huh. the, like uh -huh. the Ger in, in German in Heide, uh -huh. heathen. Well, it comes from, from, the from Latin pagus, which which really is the it's like a originally it was more urban than it was country. It was the city ward. Oh, really? And a, a Pagandus was a person who belonged to a particular ward, and so he was uh, worshiping his, his local spirits, and they had their own local oven that everyone shared, and so forth. Uh, as Christianity took over, uh, then uh, the remaining, they, they divided between Christians and pagans, or the, uh, uh, what were they called? They, they were the militants, and the civilians were the, the pagans. The remnants of the pagans were the country people, and so then it became the country bumpkins. So our general linking of pagan today with the countryside is a later development. It actually, it goes back to something more urban oriented. Yeah, um, I can confirm that. I read the same. Yeah. The same information. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, so is it, something, is it something that pagans, do pagans call themselves pagans or is it something that's been applied to them from, by, from outside by, by people? It comes from the Latin paganus, the people living in the country. I know, that's incorrect. Yeah, but. Uh, <laughs> I, 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 I think it, it, it is a word which has got many different... Uh, uh, shades of implication, mm. really. And but it, uh, but in, in, in answer to that last question, uh, both. I mean, pagan was used as a derogative term for for centuries since with the advent of Christianity. But mm. contemporary pagans are, re are resurrecting it, just like witches or Wiccans are resurrecting those those terms. And so a lot of this redevelopment is looking back to the past and re valuing reusing uh, these terms these supposedly negative terms but finding something positive and affirming them so the answer is both it was both a put down term and now it's a, an affirmative term like queer yeah yeah, yeah many other instances uh what what um Rod, have you have you got um, it'd be nice to hear you uh your voice and uh, do you uh, any questions or or, or, or comments? Uh, no, this is the first time I've come on to watch, and I'm very interested. Um, uh, I'm very much, uh, I've always been fascinated by paganism. Mm. Um, I like a lot of the stuff about Christianity about treating others as you, you treated yourself, but of course, it depends on where in history you are hearing that from Christians, from what I'm listening to now. But no, um, uh, I'm mad on trees. I plant a lot of things. And uh, for me, it's a very spiritual thing. And I was born in New Zealand and I had no link or connection to the to the country, all the, all the, um, the plants or the animals really so much. But I've always been fascinated by England and Europe, which is why I came here in 92. And um, it has a real, I get very offended when foreign people come and cut, cut things down because there's a lot of, you know, to me, a, a lot. I get a great sense of deja vu when I go places sometimes or even just see pictures. Mm -hmm. So it's a, it's a very spiritual and uh, I have a real emotional connection towards Europe. And, mm -hmm. um, yeah. Uh, no, that's a nice, uh, yeah, a, a nice contribution. Yeah, no, thanks to to just yeah put something much more physical in our minds. I think we've been talking about ideas and through things, and just that kind of relation is important. Uh, um, li yeah, Linda, you're you're kind of next on the screen. Uh, uh, you you your your brow looks look, 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 looks very uh, fraught with thoughts. Uh, uh, no, oh, it's more. I'm more tired. <laughs> Long day, but I just thought it was quite interesting. Um, like Edith, you said you were a complete beginner, but you raised some interesting issues there because I'm an art historian, um, um, Anglo-Saxon art historian by PhD. Um, and in my research for my PhD, I was I was trying to find sort of early sort of pagan presences really within um within Christian iconography, like the illuminated manuscripts, um, but also um trying to find early domestic textiles within image, images as well. Um, and within art history, I think, with us also within history, 
the word pagan has always been seen as, as a word that has is a lack, whereas Christianity is the word where there is the presence and the whole. So you, when you've got Christianity, the word, and people say they're a Christian, is they have a set of beliefs, this is what they are, whereas often, particularly in art history, pagan is what pagan something is what you're not this is not christian so therefore yeah. it could possibly be pagan and i think that's um a concept that sort of how weaves a thread throughout an awful lot of of, of other forms of of of, of, of study of paganism mm -hmm. and i know michael said that yes in, in contemporary paganism they're trying to reclaim that word and make it positive but it's got many many thousands of years of, 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 of a negative connotation mm -hmm. and of the lack. And I don't think yeah. that is likely to change because even within contemporary media, um, you've got this sort of commentary on pagan and it's always seen as a negative term or a lack. Mm. And you know, you know what I mean? So I, I just find it very difficult that, for that to be overturned mm -hmm. when there's so much um, weight around the word pagan within yeah. so many disciplines. Yeah. yeah no that's a very good point um uh I, i'll ask our uh, uh, next question would be from robert and i think i want to get all people who've not spoken so i'll probably i'll ask tony and then go back to mikhail uh so pavel did you wish to reply to or oh, uh, michael are you waving goodbye or yeah yeah i have to okay <laughs> uh, thanks thanks for tonight thanks pavel so, thanks so much, good night. Michael. Good night. Uh, yeah, really good to have you. Okay, yeah, take care. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Bye -bye. Um, um, yeah, Pablo, did you want, wish to add anything to what Linda, Linda said? Perhaps only that I would like to read a paper written by you on the matter. That, that would be really fascinating. I would be very interested. Can oh, I find you excellent. on academia.edu, for instance? Um, you should be able to, yes. Yeah. So or you can just email me. Okay. I'll, put my, I'll put my email okay. in the chat and you can email yeah. me. Ah, okay. Okay, cheers. Great. Excellent. Oh, well, we'll, we'll, have, we'll have you on a, on a future meet talking about something, Linda. I think that'll be, that'll be good. Uh, uh, t Tony, Tony, uh, uh, please un unleash your, your voice. Uh, un unmute yourself. That's it. Can you hear me? Yes, great. How's that? Right. Something that struck me, uh, Pavel, you said about establishing or getting recognition of paganism as an established religion. Um, of course, it's happened in, in Iceland, where Ausa True is, I believe, recognized as an official, officially has official recognition. Um, now, some time ago, I wrote to um, or emailed Email Martin. Martin. Martin Palmer, who some of you may have heard of. Uh, he's, I think, a journalist um, by training, but he's the Secretary General of the Alliance of Religions and Conservation. And I've been listening, he's often broadcasting on, on the radio and so forth, so forth. And I, I, I wrote to him because I wondered whether he, if you go to their website, it says that they represent the major religions. And I wanted to know if there was any representation from pagan religions. So he wrote back to me and he said, thank you for your letter. Um, there is no ban as far as ARC is concerned on paganism, shamanism, etc. However, despite frequent contact a few years ago, the two criteria necessary for a faith tradition to join ARC have never been fulfilled. And the criteria are Firstly, that we only accept the fullest level of representation of such traditions, and so far, no one has been able to produce that. It would, of course, have to be international, but that's his view. Secondly, no one has developed a specific long-term plan and core theological statement which carries the support of the vast majority of pagan groups. Until those, those criteria have been fulfilled, we cannot begin discussions. We would be very interested if a real alliance of pagan groups internationally were able to do this. And he ends by saying, so do let me know if you think that likely. Well, I'm, I've yet to get back to him on that latter point, but <laughs> um, 
uh, I think that that illustrates some of the perhaps problems that um, pagans or paganism uh, encounters when it uh, is trying to gain perhaps wider recognition and acceptance. Mm -hmm. Yeah, uh, Pavel, any 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 thoughts about about that? Well, I well I think that that that's. Uh precisely it uh, un until 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 contemporary paganism would come up with a unified theology which would somehow unify uh, all different pagan branches under one strong world movement it won't be able to compete with the others because the the others are the so-called big world religions Mm. And and uh, yeah, they they really are enormous. But by yeah. doing so, they would by doing so, um, it might be a, a danger for contemporary paganism to become one of them, one of the others. Mm. So mm. it would be really difficult to to balance, to somehow navigate and, and balance, mm. to 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 keep and maintain the pagan nature. While on the other hand, uh, well, this is this is this is this is very intriguing and and, and difficult. Uh, well, I'm not sure at the, at the moment whether it is it is definitely possible, but I'm not sure with the outcome. Uh, but Pavel, uh, uh, are you aware of? The, I think it's called the World Congress of Ethnic Religions. I think. Which mm -hmm. seems to be doing that. Do, do you think that is is an idea that that could have some future to fulfil the uh, the two conditions that Tony spoke of? Well, I definitely, I am a defi I'm definitely a fan of the World Congress of uh, mm -hmm. of, of uh, ethnic religions. However, I haven't I haven't attended any one yet. Mm -hmm. uh, This one or a different, a different, uh, different, similar platforms might do the job. Mm -hmm. uh, the thing is that that we might need just one strong endeavor instead of many. But it would also it would also need to perhaps. Perhaps a a event or 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 something must have happened, which would trigger somehow the worldwide need and really pushes forward. Because what we have seen so far is different local attempts. Like this is uh, or. Mm -hmm quite locally based in the yeah. US, in different European countries. Well, now we have this uh, this uh, Congress of World Ethnic, Ethnic Religions, but, but I, don't, I don't know whether it is enough. Mm. Perhaps oh. it would need more strength, but the overall idea sound, like it, it sounds, you know, and, 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 and mm. Yeah, to to reclaim, reclaim, claim or reclaim, depending on the angle mm. of the view, your mm. or our position under the sun. Yes. So to speak. Yes. Thank you, uh, Robert. Uh, I think you had your hand up. Um, it'd be good, nice to hear you. Yeah. Yeah. Um, what I'm interested in, uh, Pavel, uh, is your perspective and view on the let's call it the continuity of pagan tradition from very early times. So for example, if we look at uh, in, in England, um, when St. Augustine um, came to this land, we, you know, we definitely see, you know, the old religion, paganism, coexisting quite harmoniously and amicably, you know, with, with, with Christianity. Um, you've got churches, 
early churches being built on old pagan sites with no issues. And in one sense, you know, by doing that, th these early churches, you know, reflecting the, the power that was inherent in these sites. And then, and then obviously then, you know, we reached the Middle Ages and we, we had this, let's say, apparent suppression of paganism. But all along, it's as if there's this underground stream of pagan tradition, which has got this very strong presence. Uh, I think it was Linda who touched upon, you know, pagan symbolism in, you know, uh, medieval cathedrals, you know, the green man. And, you know, in, in, in a very, you know, overt way. If, I mean, I, I live in Lincoln. I know the cathedral really well. And you go to the choir stalls and, you know, in the place, the most sacred place of that building, you've got these pagan symbols. And then let's uh, moving forward to the 19th century, I just made a note here. In Lincolnshire, in some village churches in the 19th century, you had wise women, witches, who were very well known in the community, but also holding, you know, positions of responsibility within the local church. And there was no issue about that. And so I'm just wondering what your view is about, you know, are we actually creating a problem that doesn't exist in the sense that paganism has got this tradition going back, you know, thousands of years before the birth of Christ. You know, we've got, you know, Paleolithic um, cave paintings of shamans, yeah? And then we can track it right through to some of the examples I, I, I was citing. And so is it really important in the sense that paganism's been there, it's always going to be there? Well, we're just wondering what your views are in that position. Let me start by saying that um, it's um, it's um, there is a contradictory approach. On the one hand, what perhaps we as twenty-first century pagans might need would be a worldwide worldwide pagan uh, platform, as we were talking about it uh, some time ago. While, on the other hand, um, it was Christianity who distorted all different things, traditions, and practices under one label, under one bag, under one label of, of paganism and and uh, putting putting together things which might not have that many things in common. This is also like a, this is a a a a big discussion. Another big discussion is uh, there are different features or different elements in uh, in architecture literature. Uh, art, um, whatever you have, what, what, whatever else you you mentioned so far, uh, in in your example, the churches, uh, the places, um, I think that's it. Or or there might be other examples, but um, Every single, every single example of a, of a purportedly pagan feature or element in the mentioned uh, categories or examples might or might not be a matter of discussion. So you might find a pre-Christian element in uh, in architecture, and uh, and then you might find. Uh, and then you might not find su such elements. The thing is, um, of course, you we can't we can't uh, the Christ the Christian culture, let's say of Europe or England, uh, was not um, 
in no connection to the past back then. So it's natural that that Christian Middle Age is uh, attributed some elements and features from the pre-Christian past or the pre-Christian era. While, but on the other hand, uh, let's say some some time ago, I I would say that there is this that there is this uh, ongoing pre-Christian culture starting in prehistoric era and and continues still nowadays. But I but there are traceable elements of of this but i but i do not think that that uh that paganism as as a big uh how do you even put it as a as a tradition um, kept its uh, uh continued or somehow maintained uh, its presence uh, throughout the middle ages and 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 uh, mm -hmm. an uh, early modern period and modern period just till nowadays and um uh, i do not even think that it is it is necessary to claim it because uh, mm -hmm. i i i think it, it is uh, this this might not be a direct answer to your question but it it reminds me of of a important topic i encounter quite often or encountered quite often uh, while I was able to uh, discuss uh, with people at PubMood. Some, especially uh, newcomers, uh, perhaps only in Czech Republic, I don't know, uh, to paganism, they, they somehow need to claim that paganism is somehow very old. Uh, but this, this uh, the, the things or many things what we do in the 2021 are not old and uh, but it's quite okay they are not because uh, only christians claim that they 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 uh, religion is, is 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 more ancient than the invention of letters just mm. on that because i mean i'm just thinking of especially in paganism T take for example wicca it seems to be an opposition between practitioners of modern Wicca and also traditional witchcraft. Uh, you know, I mean, I'm, for example, you know, my, my first wife, um, she, uh, she initially was um, uh, practicing, let's say, modern Wicca. And then she made contact with a traditional witch, an old lady, you know, uh, that I think she was in her 80s, and she passed down to her some, you know, quite old traditions, which you know, we're, we're ex you know, going back to the 19th century and beyond. And it's as if we've got these two, you know, we've got modern paganism and Wicca, and we've got traditional witchcraft, which is like this, this other stream, which just carries on and on and on. And so we have these discussions, but then we've got individuals in villages and, you know, uh, performing these calendar customs, not necessarily, you know, for, for a tourist audience, um, and you know, doing rituals in the fields in in rural communities, and they don't really have any connection with the sort of thing we're talking about here. They're just doing what they do as a practice, which is part of the the, the culture on a day to day mm -hmm. day to day basis. Mm -hmm. the, the, sure. the, the, sorry, uh, I mean there, there uh, is something called folklore as well, which maybe mm. can relate to some of these things rather than that's got a uh, uh, a, 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 I don't know, a, a certain sort of higher spiritual value that you can actually live your life according to it and you can live for <laughs> it and die for it, which is maybe not the same as, as something religious. But sorry, Pavel, sorry. No, I just wanted to add that um, another example from Czech Republic or the Czech lands, it, this, uh, with this traditional witchcraft, uh, there used to be, until communism, which basically destroyed this tradition. There, there used to be this tradition of uh, the so-called little goddesses. Bohinie or Bohinki, little goddesses or just little goddesses. Uh, it was a, um, how to put it, not a movement. It was a, let's say, a folk, a folk 
institution or an institution of wise women. Uh, and this was especially strong on the border area of Czech and Slovakia. And um, you could have an, and this is what I would, uh, this is what I would uh, identify as the closest example from the Czech lands to this, to its traditional witchcraft. Mm -hmm. uh, this, they 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 performed different or various uh, elements in their in their practice: <laughs> herbs, charms, chants. Uh, incantations, various healing practices, some kind of uh, uh, kind of psychotherapy, let's say, or all these skills you would you would you would uh, expect from a witch or wise woman. Um, but they were also deeply devout Christian, uh, at least at least from the folklore records we do have at, in hand. Uh, so they were they were Christians. So uh, so uh, the thing is, uh, and whether it is even necessary, I don't think it's necessary to 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 differentiate between between what is pagan, what is Christian. Uh, well, I'm I do not I, I'm not saying that you claim that. Mm -hmm. I'm just um, thinking about uh, what what mm -hmm. about the association. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Um, now, Mikhail, did you, I think you, you, you wanted to say something, please. Yeah, there are a few things. I want to react a little bit to what Linda said um, regarding uh, the negativity of paganism. I mean, I wouldn't take the negativity so negatively in some sense. Like in the sense of negation, maybe it's not so bad. What I mean by that, there is a how shall I say it? Um, there's a very nice essay I'm reading at the moment. It's from a Czech philosopher, Jan Patočka, and it's called uh, Negative Platonism. And uh, we've been talking here a lot about ideas in general, right? The idea of ideas is, comes from Plato, right? And, and, and this, and the way ideas are understood is also was used by Christian theology because Christian theology interpreted a lot of, or well, used a lot of Plato in their theology. And so um, in this sense, even though it was said that Odinism was sort of a reaction to, to Christianity, it makes sense, but it's, it was a reaction, but I think in the sense of this negative Platonism, and what I mean a little by that, in some sense, is the fact that, um, and this has to do with the value of freedom, because, um, how shall I say it? Um, as a person, real, if you subjugate yourself to the idea of freedom, are you really free? So shouldn't we be free from the idea of freedom to be truly free? So that's the question. Shouldn't we be free from the idea of freedom to be truly free? Good question. I would like to say a few words about uh, Lithuania. Yeah, uh, um, yeah. I, um, well, I think uh, Paul, Paul will have to, to leave. So, so yeah, well, let, let, let's try and, yeah, if you can be brief, uh, on, yeah. Andre, and then I, I think I'll have to close the... <laughs> meeting but yes go on please when i discovered that the lithuanians were the last european to be christianized in 14th century i went to vilnius and i met uh, jonas trinkunas yes who is dead in the meantime yes uh, he is now followed by his daughter who had made high level studies in uh, philosophy and so on and theology and it seems they are a, a successful continuation a continuation is important because 
most of time, pagan is related to the word of a new religion. And in their case, after the, the Teutonic, the German readers, Teutonic readers were there to yes. massacre a lot of people. Uh, after that, uh, Romuva remained hidden and, and, and since a long time now they are back again living and they speak about 5,000 members and it's it's an interesting experience. Yeah, yes, I mean we were very pleased to have um, Priva Inya as, as, as a guest here and she was, uh, yeah, she was wonderful, a breath of, of fresh air and uh, I think maybe with uh, the thoughts of the, the, the very healthy movement in Lithuania. Maybe I think we perhaps have to bring things to a, a, a close as Pavel has to has to go. And we're, we're, we're not that far from two hours. So uh, I will just say a few words and blow the candle out. Tono eprende maki erunde e moye givine ise ibe kemu ulla tukite o afnot skal kurd lofa. Blessed gods of our peoples and lands. At evening shall one praise the day, at night shall one praise the evening. We're thankful for what we profited by and for what we found pleasure in. Sigur idor, sigur idor, sigur os, sigur os, quido idor, quido idor, quido os, quido os. Hello then. Thank you so much, Pavel, uh, for your, your time and for your, your stimulating talk and uh, for your willingness to, to an answer all manner of uh, questions coming from many directions. Uh, and I think it, it's, it's a credit to the, the uh, uh, quality of, of this evening that uh, we, we're still going and it's almost coming up to the two hour mark. So uh, many thanks to everyone who, who contributed. Uh, lots of very good points made. Uh, so I, 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 I'm, I'm very grateful for people who've found time to, to, to come to, to the event this evening. So um, I, I think, uh, yeah, I, I wish everyone um, a happy uh, rest of the rest, rest of, the, of the night and uh, um, look forward to seeing, uh, well, those who'd like to come next Wednesday when uh, Kevin, who runs the Anglo-Saxon channel, YouTube channel, will be talking about uh, music in, in, in worship, in, in, in a liturgical use. And I, I'm sure that'll be very interesting. He's, uh, uh, yeah, I, I, I've, he, he seems to be looking forward to it uh, uh, a lot. And I, I've got a lot of, uh, um, yeah, a lot of fondness for Kevin. I like him a lot. Anyway, good night, everyone. Perhaps if we can all say good night to everyone, wave goodbye, and then I, I should close the meeting. Bye. Thank you, sir. Bye-bye. Thank Bye -bye. you. Yeah, nice to see you, AJ. Th thanks, Andre. Thanks, Edith, Michael, Pavel. Bye bye. Bye bye. Bye bye. Bye bye. bye, -bye.